Hello th three Mandela, I hope that you enjoyed your half term break. Let's get started on our first maths lesson of this half term. Today we are going to be recapping the work on statistics that we did before the holiday. Our learning objective is, can I interpret and present data using pictograms, bar charts and tables? In today's lesson, we will be recapping our learning from this block so that we are able to present information in different ways so that we can use pictograms, bar charts and tables so that we can answer the questions based on the information that is presented to us in different ways. Let's get going with our lesson starter. For this, you will need your whiteboard or a piece of paper. Once I've read the questions to you, pause your video and have a go at answering the questions for me. Question one, look at the table. Which clubs does Tim go to? Question two, write 14 in tally marks. Question number three, Subtract 75p from £4.16p. and p. Remember back to our unit of work on Monday and use the strategy that you feel most confident in using to find how much money is left. Question number four. What is 100 more than 382? Let's look at the answers. Which clubs does Tim go to? If we look at the table, we can find Tim's name in one of the columns at the top. So here is Tim. And if we read down that column, we can see that Tim goes to art club. If we carry on reading down, we can see that he also goes to cooking club. So the clubs that Tim goes to are art and cooking. Let's look at number two. Write 14 in tally marks. Check your work. Did you, you draw this? What does this represent? This represents five. Five, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. For question number three, if you subtract 75p from £4.16p, and the total amount of money left will be £3.41p. Did the strategy that you used help you to find the answer? If you found that tricky, write me a little note on your work so that I can see in tapestry and we can go back and recap that in one of our live sessions. Question number four. What is 100 more than 382? So you had to use your knowledge of place value to help you to add 100 to this number. If you add 100 to 382, you will end up with 482. The pictogram shows the colour of cars parked in a car park. Let's remember what a pictogram shows us. The pictogram has a key. In this example, one car picture is equal to two cars, so that we know that each car is equal to two. Question one, how many parked cars are red? So what do we need to do to solve this? We need to count the number of cars that are red. Count with me. Remember, we're counting in twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So all together, there were ten red cars. So I can write this as ten red cars and it's important to remember to write the red cars so that we remember that we are talking about red cars. Let's have a look at our next question. How 
many of the parked cars were blue? Remember, one symbol, so one picture of a car is equal to two cars. Count with me, two, four, six, eight. Oh, I've got half the car. Can you remember what half the car would represent? It would represent half of the total. What is half of two? Half of two is one. So there are nine blue cars. Excellent. I want you to pause the video and see if you can find out how many cars are parked in total. Then we'll come back together and check our answer to this. So pause your video for me. So there were 10 red cars, nine blue cars, 14 white cars and three yellow cars. If we add these amounts together, we will find that there are 36 cars all together. Then the final question is write a question about the pictogram. I'm going to show you how to write a question, then I'd like you to pause the video and write your own question. Think back to some of the questions we answered before the holidays. I'm going to say how many more white cars are there than yellow cars? So how many more white cars, oh, check your spelling, so this is a question where the person that was answering it would need to find the difference. Pause your video and have a go at writing your own question about the pictogram. You can take a picture of that in with your work today so that I can see your questions. Let's have a look at the bar chart. All the children in class three choose their favourite fruit. The bar chart shows the results. Let's look at our bar chart and remind ourselves of what a bar chart needs to have. A bar chart needs to have a title. So this title is called our favourite fruit. We've got our two axes. We've got our axes that are labelled with numbers on the line. What scale is my axes going up in today? It is going up in one. We could give this axis a title, so we could call that number of children. So you could write that and then we've got the names of our fruits. So we've got apple, banana, grape, strawberry, and orange. And we could call that name of fruit. Just going to write that in there. I'm not going to call it name of fruit. I'm going to just call it fruit. Because we can tell it's a fruit. So I'm going to put that in the middle. If you remember, you can see that there's an equal gap between each of the bars. I'm going to do my one for up here and I'm going to write number of children. Let me get some writing tools. Bear with me. I'm going to lock that into place to make it a little bit easier. And hopefully I should be able to do some writing. So now that I've done that, I've got some questions to answer about the bar chart. Question A, what is the most popular fruit? So that means which children liked which fruit and which was the most popular fruit? So how many children liked each fruit? 
If we look at the apple, we can see that eight children liked apples if we read across to the axes. If we looked at the banana, we can see that just six children liked bananas. If we look at the grapes, we can see four children liked grapes. How many children liked strawberries? Can you tell me? So read across, how many? That's right, five children. And finally, orange. How many children liked oranges? Well done, it was three children. So what was the most popular children? We know that the most popular children, popular children, the most popular fruit, sorry, children, was an apple because eight children liked the apples. So the most popular fruit is apple. And to write a sentence, the most popular fruit is apple. So the next question says, how can you tell by just looking? So we counted, but we can also tell by just looking. Have a little think about that for me. We can tell by just looking because it is the tallest bar. So if it's the tallest bar, that means it is the most popular fruit. Our next question. What is the least popular fruit? Pause your video and have a think. That's right, it was the orange. And we can tell because it is the smallest bar on our bar chart. So we can write the orange, oh, check your spellings. Make sure you spell those math words popular, least, most correctly. So let me move you up. So our next question says, how many more children like apples best than like grapes best? So we've got to work out the difference between grapes and apples. So if eight children liked apples, we can write it as a subtraction sentence, number sentence, to work out the difference. So eight take away and how many children liked grapes? Four. So eight subtract four is, that's right, four. So four more children. So we can write that as a sen number sentence. Then our next question is, how many children are there in class three? So we need to add together all of the totals to find out how many children there are in class three. So eight children like apples. So eight add. And I need to add how many children liked bananas. So six children liked bananas. Then I need to add how many children liked grapes. We know that four children liked grapes. Then we need to add how many children liked strawberries? Five children. And finally, we need to add how many children liked oranges? And that was three. Can you pause your video and add those numbers together for me? That's right. So there are 26 children in class three. Let's have a look at the tables. And this was the last thing we looked at before the holidays. The table shows the number of school days in each month. 
So if we look at the tables, we've got a heading for our column, month. Then we've got all the months of the year, January, February, March, April, May, <coughs> June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Then in this column, we've got the number of school days in each month. So that's the number of days that you would go to school each month. Question A, which month has the fewest school days and why? I want you to look at the table and find the month with the fewest school days. Which month has the fewest school days? That's right, August has the fewest school days. It has zero school days. And that is because we don't go to school in the summer holidays. Let's look at the next part of the question. Oh, Williams went on to the wrong page. Let's get our highlighter because we will need this for this. So it says, term one is from September to December. Term two is from January to April. Term three is from May to July. And we've got to work out which term has the most school days. So it tells us term one is from September to December. So I'm going to highlight those dates. September has 18 days at school. October has 17 days. November has 22 days. December has 16 days. So we need to add those together to find out how many days there are in term one. Can you pause the video and add those together for me? So in those four months, there are 73 days. So I'm going to write that down to help me remember. Then we know that term two is from January to April. So let's highlight the months from January to April. So we've got January with its 18 days, February with its 15 days, March with its 19 days and April with its 16 days. Can you add those together for me? That's right, it's 68 days. I'm going to write that here to help me remember that it's 68 days. Then it says term three is from May to July. So now we need to add together the 22 days in May, the 20 days in June, and the seven July days in July. Can you add those together for me? That's right, there are 49 days. So now we can tell which term has the most school days in. Which term has the most school days in? So, term one has the most days in. Term one has the most school days as there are 73 days. Now it's your turn. Complete the activity to show me what you have learnt about statistics. Then you could complete the challenge if you have time. Remember, the task should be taking you about 20 minutes to do. Question one. The pictogram shows the number of animals on a farm. How many cows are there on the farm? How many sheep are, how many more sheep are there than horses? How many animals are there 
all together. So that's like some of the questions we've worked on. Question two, class three voted for their favorite drink. The results are shown in the pictogram. Seven people like water the most. Complete the pictogram. So you need, just need to draw the cups to represent water on your piece of paper. Then you need to complete the sentence. The most popular drink is three more children like milk than less children like than water. You could write those sentences out for me. Question three. The table and bar chart show how many children attend breakfast club each day. Complete the table and bar chart. Remember to use a ruler to help you. How many more children attend on Monday than on Friday? Alex says less than 100 people go to breakfast club each week. Do you agree? Explain your answer. Question number four. Use the information to complete the missing labels on the bar chart. If you get as far as this, you will need to draw your bar chart out and use the statements to help you. Netball is the most popular sport. Three times as many people like netball as like rugby. Twice as many people like tennis as like rugby. The number of people who like football is more than 10. When you've finished or done as much as you can, I want you to tell me how you feel with the statistics. Oh, Miss Williams can't say it, with statistics. So if you don't feel very confident, write a one on your piece of paper. And if you feel very confident, write a five. If you have time. There is a challenge for you to create two separate pictograms to display the following information. The symbol used in each should have a value of more than one. Which value will you choose for each pictogram? And you need to explain your decisions. I'm looking forward to seeing what you can remember about statistics in your work on tapestry.